Welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome to another webinar. Uh, good afternoon, good evening and good morning. So if you don't already know me, this is TC here, uh, IT Lab's Chief Talking Officer, G CTO. Do you like what we did there? And we have uh, our guest here from California, sunny California. I would, love, I would love to live there. Eugene, Vice President of Software Engineering at US Auto Parts, a company that provides a lot, I think, is an understatement of parts, over, over half a million. And he'll be presenting a talk on e-commerce search technology. Do you buy it or you, do you build it? So that's an interesting question where tech leaders have to kind of decide whether they start from scratch or kind of buy the stuff in. And I think this, this is a question that applies to many, many kind of technologies out there. Uh, but today it's about uh, search technology. The presentation is going to be about 30 to 40 minutes long. Uh, we'll have questions in between, uh, depending on how they come up. So um, we do have a question and answer session afterwards, approximately 20 minutes. And there is a, a Q&A Q kind of button down here somewhere. Please put your questions in there and they'll queue them up and I'll bring them into the space as and when they're appropriate. Um, and maybe leave them towards the end. I know I've got some questions already lined up. Welcome, Eugene. Thank you, TC. Uh, really appreciate it. I'm uh, very uh, excited to present to everybody that is uh, attending this. Uh, you know, one of the really cool things about, uh, um, you know, being able to present on the web is that uh, I'm here in Los Angeles, you're in London, and uh, we have uh, attendees from other parts of the world, uh, be it in Macedonia, be it in Europe, be it in Asia, uh, really all over the place. Um, one thing that I want to also say is uh, I hope that those that are in the United States are treating today as a Friday. So happy Thursday, Friday, or whatever you want to call it, since it's uh, Fourth of July weekend coming up. And then I uh, want to also say happy Friday to all of you guys that are uh, on a different time zone where it's already Friday. Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> um, so let's, let's begin. Um, today, I'll be talking about our uh, e-commerce search and uh, what that means in terms of, you know, our journey uh, when it comes to U.S. auto parts, uh, as, as well as really anybody who is evaluating adding a search uh, type of technology into their website. So uh, a little bit about myself, since some of you may have uh, been uh, meeting me for the first time. Uh, I have uh, over 20 years of combined experience in SaaS, PaaS. Uh, I've built a software that's for a HR industry, for FinTech, gaming, uh, and I'm working as a, a um, leader in the e-commerce space at the moment. Um, I've also built solutions in AWS, Azure, uh, Google Cloud, uh, as well as other uh, um, places like uh, SAP and so on. And uh, one of uh, my strong beliefs uh, is following the sun uh, and having a globally distributed software engineering team. And for me, that's really important because uh, you get to have a little bit more flexibility in culture differences uh, that allow for very different and diverse thinking, first of all. But then also it allows you to uh, troubleshoot and support your users uh, throughout the globe. Uh, many of us uh, have users in any and every co uh, continent and uh, country. And so having a globally distributed team allows for having somebody who is not just uh, picking up the phone and answering you as a tech support person, but is actually going a, a step further and uh, providing you a world-class engineer who will solve your problems right there and then. And, um, you know, one of the reasons why we're having this talk here is I used to uh, use uh, IT Labs to design a job search board. And uh, they have done a fantastic job. Uh, I would say uh, I love working for that team and working with that team. And um, uh, we will cover some of the things uh, in the rest of these slides where uh, they've, uh, uh, they've had a very uh, big contribution uh, when we're talking those, uh, about those specific features. Excellent. So first, uh, I want to kind of cover what my challenges are or what our challenges are at US Auto Parts. 
And uh, one of the big challenges that we have uh, is that uh, one part fits multiple cars. And what does that mean? So think of like a bottle cap uh, and you have all these bottles and you have to find which bottle that bottle cap fits. And that kind of works the same way in the auto parts industry. You'll uh, buy a part, let's say brakes, uh, and it can fit a 2002 Honda Accord. It can fit a 2003, maybe some other date ranges. Uh, it might even fit some other uh, Hondas uh, as you know, auto manufacturers uh, tend to reuse the same parts so that uh, they don't have to have a lot of maintenance uh, on their vehicles or uh, supply a lot of different parts and have them stored. Um, and so it becomes really important about making sure that uh, you're tailoring the search and parts and everything else towards the year make model, sometimes uh, engine type, sub engine type, and maybe even other uh, type of values that you may uh, think about in the future that are also important. Maybe let's say on a truck, a small crew cab or something else mm. uh, may have different parts than let's say an extended cab. Yeah. And, Just a question around that, Eugene, very quickly. So in sure. terms of those kind of uh, compatibility of parts across different models, is that data that you have to enter in or is that stuff that you get from the manufacturers or manufacturing uh, people that produce the parts? Sure. So um, in our industry, I would say that it's both. Um, you manufacture the parts uh, and you have manu manufacturing facilities and those facilities uh, obviously provide you some data on those parts uh, or you have provided them the spec so they build to your spec. Yeah. Uh, but uh, ultimately, even after everything is said and done, you still have to build a, and maintain a, a catalog system <clears throat> that has all of the uh, part details. Uh, yeah. um, essentially, a PIMS is what they call it in our uh, industry terms. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, so. Um, so yeah. So the other challenge that we have is that uh, users really do call some things differently. Um, a good example uh, of that would be uh, bumper support versus valence. Uh, and those are the exact same thing. Uh, so when you're doing searches, if someone puts in valence, you should be able to return back uh, the same uh, items as if someone puts in bumper support. Um, there are other, um, more granular nuances. So a good example, uh, right now it's getting hotter and hotter here. And so, you know, come July or August, uh, you may want a radiator fan. Radiator fan. Uh, well, some radiator fans double as AC fans. And so if you're searching for a radiator fan for that specific vehicle where uh, it also, uh, um, you know, for that specific vehicle, they'll return all the radiator fans, right? But let's say for that vehicle, there is no AC fan. So if someone is searching AC fan, you need to return back uh, the radiator fans as well. Um, and then there's another complexity that comes in, which is kits uh, or sets. So a kit is a, is a, um, is a collection of parts. Uh, possibly different parts that uh, allow you to complete a job, okay? Uh, you know, oftentimes you're buying a big piece uh, of whatever hard part that might be, but you may need some washers uh, or, you know, uh, bolts or some other pieces, clips or, or anything else. Uh, in order to get that job done. And most likely uh, as uh, parts age, you're probably wanting to replace those as well at the same time. And so that would be a kit. And a set would be uh, a, a pair of uh, the same item. So if you need a set of five things in order to, to, to complete the job, that would be a set. Uh, well, uh, specifically with kits, one of the, search challenges that uh, you would have is that if let's say I am searching for an oxygen sensor, 
I probably am just looking for the oxygen sensor and that's all I want to return. Mm. But if I'm looking for a catalytic converter, uh, I want to see the catalytic converter and a, probably a kit side by side where the cata catalytic converter is including you know, the oxygen sensor and all the other pieces that are needed in order to get that job done. Cool. Um, any questions here so far, TC? Um, I, I have, because um, I, I think on a previous podcast, uh, you kind of described this and, and it kind of blew my brain a little bit because the complexity of this uh, uh, interrelatedness of uh, different words, you know, kind of right. thing, kind of creates quite a, uh, a challenging problem to solve, you know, and obviously you've solved it, you know. Um, so I, I guess there's quite a lot of work that goes into trying to kind of relate all this stuff up. Um, uh, uh, and also around the kits, you know, knowing what, what the kits are going to be comprised of. I mean, I, you know, you gave me the job, I'll probably kind of cobble a few things together. It's, you know, uh, but, but there's some real kind of uh, knowledge base that sits underneath knowing what, what those kits got to comprise of. Yeah, exactly. It's definitely not a simple search like uh, maybe other e-commerce sites have where all you're searching for is a, uh, you know, red shoes or yeah. a t-shirt or something like that. Right. <laughs> And so, so I'm kind of curious in terms of all the work. I know you, you've mentioned that you worked on search engines, a search technology for this. Then would you say this is the most complex you've worked on? I would say they're equally complex. Right. Um, they, uh, and I'll go into that in a later slide uh, to compare those two industries, sure. um, especially given I've worked in kind of both. But uh, um I would say they're equally complex. There's just um, a slightly different level of complexity when it comes to parts, and especially with kits and sets. Mm. Um, that's uh, really where the complexity lies when it comes to making sure you're, you have like scoring and ranking set up cor correctly so that things do line up and you, the customer doesn't lose track of the more important items that they're searching for. Cool. Uh, so um, on to the next slide. So um, on behalf of uh, John Dewey, who is an American philosopher, psychologist, uh, educational reformer in the first uh, 20th century, um, he uh, wrote this, uh, there's a quote from him. Uh, we do not learn from our experiences. We learn by reflecting on our experiences. And uh, uh, that is very important, right? So, um, you know, uh, just because you did it once, you don't necessarily use that and do exactly the same thing a second time, right? But it is important that uh, what you've learned in the past uh, should kind of mold you uh, towards the future and uh, allow you to make even better decisions uh, later on. Sure. And, uh, and that's exactly what uh, uh, we are doing at US Auto Parts. Uh, and um, comes back to that question that you had uh, which is, uh, you know, how complex or how different uh, doing a job search versus a part search uh, are, right? Yeah. So one of the things is uh, searching skills and a job title keywords, right? Uh, it's uh, when you're searching for a skill or job title within a, you know, you're hunting for uh, your uh, position that someone is offering, mm. right? You're putting in, let's say, .NET or Java or Node.js on a technology side. Yes. Uh, and really, you, you want to get, uh, get a list of resumes that really match that. But in those cases, uh, you're still uh, looking for, if someone's typing Node.js, the, re the results might return to you, let's say, Express.js or uh, React.js that they've mentioned. Uh, at least if you're building a really good job search uh, engine, right? You want those uh, similar keywords and things like that uh, to show up. Uh, also, when you're typing in Java software engineer or something like that, right? Uh, you're you're pre-pending a category, kind of like uh, in auto parts where you're looking at year, make, model, right? So the same kind of concept still applies in both areas because you have to kind of segment the 
the section of types of resumes you're looking for, and then the the keywords for uh, what uh, are the strengths that the the person has, right? And that applies to part searches, right? As as I mentioned, you know we have those part names. Uh, so if you're looking for a mirror or something like that, uh, you know um, you're gonna put in let's say a 2002 Honda Accord mirror or whatever, mm. something like that. Um, and uh, a person may fit multiple jobs, just like a, a person needs to know about uh, parts that fit their vehicle. Um, they kind of go hand in hand, right? Um, I would say um, in that case, they're very similar. Uh, yeah. And also, um, Skills need to be mapped to related terms, as I mentioned earlier, yeah. and parts need to be mapped to what different people call it. Yeah. Um, job description is a composite of multiple skill requirements, and kits and uh, sets are composed of multiple parts. So it's very, very similar, as you can see. Um, and then users want to find jobs that best fit for them, right? And we uh, in the parts industry want to guarantee a fit for a repair. Um, the worst thing that a user can have is ship a very heavy part to their house, yeah. uh, spend a lot of money, and then find out that there's a pin somewhere that doesn't fit because um, you know they didn't choose the right engine type or, or the right year or or something else like that. Yeah. So in order to solve for all these needs, the project needs a few uh, features, right? One is autocomplete. Uh, that helps the user uh, make sure that they're, they're getting exactly uh, what they're looking for. It kind of hints them and helps them, right? Same, you know, we're all familiar with this with Google search or whatever other tool that we're using. Uh, you need full text search. Uh, you need to boost and bury. Uh, what that means is kind of rank um, the items so that uh, the most important and most prominent and things that the user actually probably most likely wants to purchase are all the way at the top. And that could be with various uh, uh, formulas or reasons. One could be that kits and sets need to show up next to the, the same part that c contains it. Uh, it might be that uh, it's based on price and popularity. So if a part is purchased a lot, that might be something that is important uh, to surface um, as a most popular item. Yeah. Same as you know some of the other uh, um, industry veterans starting with the, the letter A do. Yeah, uh, right. Uh, and then uh, vehicle uh, and part name aliases, as I mentioned earlier, right? Yeah. Uh, suggestors, so if someone is typing something uh, in that may mean something else to kind of auto suggest uh, those things to that user and then filtering. So, you know, having, let's say a sidebar or something else that you might have um, mm. on the site that allows you very complex filtering uh, of the initial data set that is returned. Beautiful. Yeah. I, I'm kind of interested in the kind of boost and bury. I mean, that's another dimension on top of this, you know, not only bring you back stuff from the search technology, but you're also trying to give it, give things a precedence, you know? Um, I, and, and in terms of starting that, how, how do you do that? Is this something that you build up over time or is it uh, where you sit at the part, you know, and say for this keyword, this is what is going to sit at the top kind of thing. So you generally want to create a formula for it. <clears throat> different tools and different systems uh, treated differently. So it, it really it depends and it applies differently to, you know, even if let's say you're buying a technology in the search uh, space, yes. um, each one um, uses a different underlying mechanism. Uh, and so you kind of have to uh, use what, uh, what you got. Yeah. Uh, and even if you're building something uh, from scratch, uh, whatever um, system you end up using, uh, they also have their own mechanisms for uh, boost and bury. Right. It is uh, it, it is a uh, problem that is inherent in search. So every search has to solve this. 
So yeah. they're, they all have a mechanism to do this. Yeah. It's just some may be more powerful than others or easier to configure than others. It's kind of quite interesting. You suddenly start to realize that there are lots of different intricacies, you know, of, of the search. It's not just a case of collecting information and making sure it's relatable. It's also uh, right. what's relevant, you know? So um, some of the other tech requirements that uh, we have is uh, ability to push a full index. Um, you know, one of the things about our, our industry is that uh, there's an ever expanding set of uh, terms or filters or, you know, basically attributes that parts have uh, as a new part uh, is added to our catalog that maybe we've never carried. Now we have another set of attributes uh, that we want to collect, right? And some of those attributes may be important enough where the user may want to filter by them or, or the, the user may want to search by them. And uh, in order to push all of those attributes and index, uh, mm -hmm. you, need, you really need the ability to push a full index again. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but also, you know, there are regular updates to the system uh, that we need to be able to support. If like, uh, let's say stock uh, changes and the item is out of stock um, and we may want to uh, adjust the search results based on that, yes. um, we need to be able to real time update those uh, uh, changes. Yes. And so, um, you know, based on the different technologies in this space, uh, it may be where something might be, uh, have the ability to do real time uh, incremental updates through streaming. Uh, and some may uh, be able to do the same through just uh, API endpoints. Yeah. So um, of course, streaming is more powerful. So a system that has that, that uh, that's a much better benefit there because it'll be faster and just more robust. Mm. And then the other part, uh, as with any e-commerce or any e-anything, uh, zero downtime is almost a, a requirement. Uh, if you are even out for maintenance in the middle of the night, uh, even if you're only serving the U.S. market or some of single market, uh, it's still uh, customers expect that you really don't have any kind of maintenance. Uh, and so if you're building a search technology or you're using a search technology, this is, I would say, paramount that it has the functionality to push a full index or do updates without any downtime. That's right. I mean, I mean, kind of the analogy I kind of imagine, I always wonder about this for, uh, you know, online sites is that if somebody like basically the door of the shop has fallen off or, uh, or somebody right. glued it shut, you know, it's, you're not going to yeah. make any money. It's really important. But, uh, yeah. It's, and then it has to have security built in, right? Um, the search terms, the search adjustments that you're making, you need to have the ability to make sure that um, only specific users have access to it. And uh, you have the ability to review the changes and um, you know, have uh, as much configuration uh, of uh, policies as possible. Sure. So what goes into an analysis of build versus buy? I think cost to develop is a very important factor. Um, you know, uh, as, a, as the market matures and you have, let's say, a lot of competitors that are doing the same thing, mm. uh, if the cost is really high to develop, you may want to not uh, choose to do that, right? Uh, you may choose to just buy uh, technology because um, the features really are not changing that much uh, in, let's say, the search landscape or whatever landscape of features that you're looking for, uh, looking at. Uh, maybe you're exploring some other system that you're looking at the build versus buy, right? Sure. Um, cost to maintain is also important. So there's kind of multiple, um, mul multiple areas that uh, you have to look at when you're talking about cost to maintain. There's infrastructure maintenance, there's um, there's software maintenance. There's uh, uh, maintaining a team that is knowledgeable. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh, a lot of these things uh, all play into what it costs us to maintain, yeah. <clears throat> and then cost to improve, uh, or in other words, innovate. Right. Yeah. 
uh, one of the things that uh, if you are choosing to build, uh, you're more likely to choose because uh, you know um, you want to have a competitive advantage over somebody within the industry, uh, and uh, cost to improve becomes a factor in your decision making. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and what you mentioned a second ago around that kind of op time, I imagine that maintenance um, ideally doesn't bring the site down at all. Um, you can kind of slip stuff in, you know? Exactly. And it, it has to be that way. That, that should be a default requirement almost. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then uh, there's uh, the level of customization. So if you're buying something, that becomes a very big uh, and important factor, right? So um, how flexible is the system uh, to adjust to your needs. Uh, do you need to customize to that system and make changes on your system to support whatever deficiencies the, the system you're buying have? Or is it the reverse? Can you just customize that system to adapt to your business? Right. And then, and then the, that kind of ties hand in hand with the level of integration, right? If you're integrating uh, and you have to make those customizations on your side, then the level of integration becomes higher and the cost of integration becomes higher. Um, and then uh, another piece that goes into this analysis is your internal level of expertise. Are you expert, uh, uh, are you, um, you know, uh, are you not a, a company that is tech heavy? Uh, maybe buy becomes a very high priority for you. If you are tech heavy, then, uh, you know, do you have your team that is composed of uh, offshore and uh, outsource uh, members or uh, in-house? Uh, what's your churn rate uh, within the organization? Sure. Are, are there ways for you to minimize that? Uh, all of that uh, has to become um, something that you factor in your decision making. Yeah. And I would say that's a more of an art than a science right. because uh, you know, different managers, different leaders, manage your organizations quite widely different uh, in this yeah. aspect. So on that front, um, what came up for me is, is there, there's a kind of a risk lens that we can look through. I can exactly. Imagine, you know, yes, yeah. exactly. Very much related to risk. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, what's your drive for innovation, right? Um, are, you, are you okay with uh, having tools that other industry players have? Or are you trying to out innovate them and provide something vastly different than the, what they're doing? And then uh, I think something that gets overlooked is uh, bug fixing prioritization needs. So uh, one of the challenges that you have with a buy specifically is that uh, um, whatever bugs you may have, those kind of go into the queue and they get prioritized with all other customers needs. Uh, so you may, you may have to wait for a bug fix a lot longer than if you're the only individual who is ma managing and maintaining this feature and you yourself can say, this bug is more important than this other bug and we're gonna focus and get this delivered as soon as possible. Yes, yeah. And of course there's more other items that can go into an analysis, but I felt like this is a good base yeah. uh, for anyone who's looking to compare something whether or not it's a build versus buy uh, sure uh, we, we've got a question here actually that's kind of maybe related to this and, and maybe you'll cover it later but from Ilya, thank you for the question it's around i guess it um to kind of summarize the question it's around that kind of feedback loop in terms of at, when the search technology is up and running uh, and things aren't quite working as they expect people aren't finding the result and later on they find the result is there some kind of machine learning going on here as part of this to to kind of you know, enhance the search? Yes. So um, what happens uh, in uh, search is that uh, there are, there's kind of a, a concept of um, kind of like file not found or search not found, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's where, um, it's, a ca it's, a, it's a search miss essentially. Someone attempted something and then yeah. they missed it, right? Yeah. Uh, and that is an ongoing, um, that's an ongoing maintenance that you have to perform, whether or not you go with build or buy. Yeah. Uh, you want to continuously improve your search. Uh, and 
one of the things that uh, a, a good system would have is uh, the ability for you, for, for the person analyzing it, to have something surface with also likeness and possibly other filters and uh, tools yeah. to really help you uh, understand which terms uh, really are, are needed in order to, um, to improve your search results. Yes. Uh, I think AI uh, is, is a good component there as well, but that still kind of can miss uh, things because um, it may not necessarily, because it's a miss, uh, it may not necessarily know what the user was intending. Yes. Uh, um, if you, um, and maybe at one point, we will get to a point where that AI is uh, very auto parts aware. Yes. And you fed it all of the catalog data and uh, it kind of understands the intent. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, it can adjust and uh, build new uh, queries uh, yeah. that a, a user uh, is trying to, to search for uh, and the results. But uh, I, I don't think we're there yet. <laughs> no, no. I was just thinking actually as a kind of joke, I was kind of amusing myself. Uh, you need to create a Jedi Jedi mind reading uh, functionality. <laughs> exactly. you know? Yeah, you heard exactly. it here first, audience. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, talking about buy, right? Um, when we're talking about buy, uh, there's some a few things that uh, I can uh, that are kind of standouts when when I was thinking uh, of uh, search specifically. Um, so some of the strengths. Um, it's a tailored and fully maintained user interface. Uh, what that means is uh, you're not building that stuff uh, out. Um, you're buying it. Uh, and if there's updates to the user interface, you're not spending anything on development cost. Uh, and most likely they have thought of common uh, search uh, um, situations that most uh, players have had. And if they have uh, uh, search, um, uh, if they've built search where other uh, players in your industry and vertical use it, uh, then uh, most likely they have adjusted the interface to support those use cases as well. All right. Um, one of the weaknesses on this area, I would say, is that there's no streaming API in most cases. Um, they're, they just have an API that you have to push to. So if you have a very large data set, um, you, you may um, exhaust uh, your API limits and some other things that uh, can come, uh, come up in this conversation. Yeah. Um, the other strength for uh, buy is it's, a, it's generally a fixed cost. You know what you're paying for and uh, you pay for that on a monthly, annual, semi-annual, uh, or whatever uh, cadence that uh, you have, uh, uh, you know, purchase purchase the product at, mm -hmm. um, and uh, that might be very good for some, uh, as you can uh, project your future costs very easily. Yeah. Uh, whereas when you're uh, building, the costs are just estimates, and uh, from a long-term perspective, you may choose to. Um, invest more in that technology or invest less yeah. uh, and be able to fluctuate that a little bit. Um, um, well, I've got a curiosity around that just in terms of the kind of figure that we're talking about when you're buying something in like that. Is that something that you can, that you can share or um, have a, I mean, we, are we talking millions? It's not millions, um, but it can get up there. Um, you know, I think, I think it really depends on um, the site um, and uh, and how many SKUs they have. Uh, there's a there's a lot of um, calculations that go into what that's going to end up costing for that particular vendor. Yeah. Or company. Um, and then uh, I would say one of the weaknesses um, in this area is you're you're putting in a fixed cost, but most of these solutions or a lot of these solutions are multi-tenant. Uh, yeah. So you can have a noisy neighbor problem. Uh, let's say um, in our industry, um, you know, holiday season for Christmas is maybe not our top peak season. 
but it is for some other industries. And if they're on the same system, they could uh, potentially impact performance uh, okay. towards your, yeah. your systems. Uh, not all uh, are multi-tenant, so it's not always a, a weakness. Uh, you really have to analyze the buy solutions that are out there uh, mm -hmm. in the search space if you're looking at search. Yeah. And, uh, and really compare um, and contrast uh, what you're gaining and what you're losing in that respect. Mm. Um, of course, uh, in most cases, when you're buying, there's a lower integration cost, even with your own systems, because um, you know, they're trying to cater towards as many companies as possible and building out the kind of low cost, easiest to implement solution um, uh, to get it running and working sure. for you. Um, but it could be more difficult to customize, right? Yeah. So um, as, uh, as the solution becomes more and more robust, you're dealing with more and more customizations that you have to learn and adapt to. Mm. Um, and then uh, one of the other strengths is uh, new feature releases without additional effort. You know, um, most of these companies have a very good cadence towards releases and uh, you don't have to do anything. Uh, you'll just get notified when there's a new feature and you just need to learn about it and possibly start using it. Sure. Right. And, um, and in terms of, um, I mean, like requests for features. So, for example, if you see something, oh, this would be really cool if you could do that. Is that something right. companies are open to? You know? Absolutely. Uh, a lot of these vendors are looking for, um, for that, actually. They're looking for partners, essentially, right. primarily because um, that is how they innovate, right? By you supplying them the need. And yeah. they can innovate and then they can sell this product to uh, more companies within your vertical. Yes. Right. right. Um, and that becomes a competitive disadvantage, of course. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, but at the same time, it, it is providing the features that you actually need. Um, cool. Any questions there? No. Um, no not on this, uh, okay. not related to this at the moment. Uh, we have got some few. So um, the other weakness there, though, um, you know, you're getting these features, but uh, uh, external support escalation may be a challenge. Mm. And some of these vendors, um, they may, uh, some are, uh, I would say, mature, uh, where your escalation path is very defined. Uh, and some uh, are, are, you know, younger companies within the search space. And they really don't really have a good support and escalation um, mechanism. So it's something that you have to really watch for. Because uh, the worst thing that can happen is uh, search affecting your entire uh, browsing and user experience. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and then, of course, it's more rigid. Um, you know, you, you can't just add a new feature, right? Uh, if it was your system, you and you thought of some feature that is really important to you that can really set you apart, uh, you have the ability to prioritize that within your roadmap and yeah. make sure that that gets released first. Yeah. Um, another big strength of buy is it's already available, right? You could just go out to the store, yes. <laughs> store, <laughs> pick it up <laughs> and install. <laughs> yes. Uh, but, uh, um, that comes with, uh, uh, of course, the same weaknesses that we mentioned, servicing multiple customers, no competitive advantage. Yeah, cool. cool. So project impact versus complexity. I think this is a big, big graph uh, to kind of uh, split or understand or separate, right? Um, this is uh, one of the biggest ways that someone decides whether or not they're going to build versus buy. And then they go out, if they're going to buy, they're going to go out and look at all of the companies that are available and follow the process and, uh, and uh, f feature uh, differentiations that uh, I kind of mentioned earlier. Yeah. But uh, here, what you're looking for, is this a low strategic impact or a high strategic impact? Yeah. Basically, is it important to your business? Right. 
like a competitive advantage kind of situation, right? Yeah. Um, and then how complex is it for you to roll this out? Right. Okay. So if it's a low strategic impact uh, and uh, low application complexity, then it really doesn't matter whether or not you're building versus buying. Uh, you might as well, you may buy it, you may build it. it it's not going to make a material impact to your business. Mm. Okay. Now, if it has a high strategic impact, but it's very easy to implement, uh, then most likely uh, it is a build scenario. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and we'll talk about in the next slide uh, how you can minimize your complexity uh, to possibly um, get you to a state where you consider that as most likely to build. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Great. And then, uh, what, uh, what did you say? TC? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was just saying this. I, I like that diagram. It's going to show you that, you know, where to kind of place yourself in terms of, um, you know, in terms of what are, you, what, are you, what are your needs are, you know. I, I imagine right. that the strategic impact is always going to be, have some impact on your organization. Uh, yes. But, um, but I guess, yeah, I'm trying to think of examples where it's low, you know. Yep. Yeah. And then, um, and then if the application complexity is super high, um, but it's not really important to your business in terms of st strategic impact. Yeah. Um, let's say like an ERP system, right? Mm. How many people do you know are building their own ERP system? No, they're probably buying. Yes. Yes. Right? Uh, and so uh, th that's a good example of most likely to buy. Cool. Okay. Now, if both of these are high, then it becomes an ambitious project, right? And then it's really important to understand whether or not you even want to do this project, is this really worth it? Mm. Uh, it could be almost like a separate business line in this case. And then you have to decide on whether you want to invest in that, uh, whether or not build or buy. Um, yeah. Uh, and most likely that will probably fit into the build area, but who knows? It, it really has to be something that uh, you put even more thought into uh, uh, in your perspective. Sure. Yeah. So build. So um, I mentioned that um, when you're looking at uh, build, you want something with low complexity. Mm. And so an example of build in this space would be using tools like Elastic, um, uh, Elasticsearch, and possibly minimizing the requirement for um, complexity would be maybe having it uh, um, as a managed service. Right. Okay. Um, that way you're at least not dealing with as much infrastructure, but more in the development space um, of this area. Right. Okay. And it provides you an op, uh, it's optimized for search. It's scalable. You can deploy it anywhere. Uh, and it has built in security. A lot of the f uh, things that uh, we're looking for. Um, the things that it would be missing is probably dashboards, configuration, and uh, user interfaces that uh, uh, you may want that are specific to your business. So yeah. you still have to build something, uh, yeah. but it would be a lot less. Yeah. So just from my understanding, being a newbie in this space, when you say the elastic, this is a product out there? A product, product. Yeah? yes. That allows you to then start somewhere and, and then build from there. Yes. So elastic search. Yeah. Is a um, it's both an open source community uh, type of product yes. as well as a closed source product. So it's a it's a in, in, an interesting way that uh, Elastic Company went. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, in the closed product, uh, it is a managed service that you can purchase from them. Right. And uh, um, and either hosted with them or hosted on any uh, any cloud provider. Yeah. Uh, be it Amazon, Google, uh, so on. Yes. Uh, and um, and uh, also because it's open sourced, uh, Amazon has adopted it, and they have a, their own Elasticsearch offering. Yeah. Uh, that you can also take advantage of as a managed service. Cool. Uh, so those two areas make it uh, very nice uh, and easy to manage. There are other search engines. 
um, uh, that you can take advantage of uh, to build uh, your search technology. Um, but uh, what I found uh, from a build perspective, this kind of uh, um, checked all of the metrics that we're looking for. Um, yeah. Yeah. And you can explore others uh, that may also uh, fit within uh, your business needs. Yeah. I've just got a, um, I've got a question here come through in terms of, uh, in, in terms of this topic, we've only got about 10 minutes left. So um, a, in terms of building something right from scratch, I mean, I'm talking like, you know, laying down the foundations and, and building up, is that mm -hmm. ever a smart thing to do? Um, maybe not in this space, but uh, looking at this graph, right? Yeah. Right from scratch, as long as you don't think it's a, uh, um, you know, a um, really high complexity. Yes. Uh, and uh, really, really high complexity and a strategic impact, right? Yeah. Like, um, I would say, yes, uh, right from scratch, you're, you know, you're increasing your cost. Yes. Yeah. And risk as well, I guess. And risk as well. Yes. Yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah. Any questions here or one? I think that's good. Uh, we'll kind of uh, keep. Right. So hopefully, I'll have a few minutes. We're near the top of the hour. We have no, no plenty pressure. of minutes. <laughs> plenty of minutes. Yeah. Because the next uh, portion is more interactive. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, uh, I'd love to kind of hear from the audience um, what. Uh, you know, based on what you've kind of seen from these slides, where would you gravitate to? Would you build a search uh, technology or would you buy a search technology? Yeah. Oh, we got some, uh, we got some votes coming in. All right. Oh, I'm not allowed to vote. Being the host, I'm not allowed. Yeah, I want to vote too. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like we're getting a predominant uh, bye, bye, bye. <laughs> I think we should have added another point instead of just build it from scratch, build it using uh, uh, search uh, search engines. Yes, right. Yeah, because this is this is the interesting thing actually. While you're describing this, kind of buy or build, and there's this kind of like middle ground, isn't there? You know. Yes. Right. You're trying to cater towards that middle ground. Correct. Yeah. Cool. So it looks like we've got a predominance of buy. Buy wins the race. All right. Well, there you go. There well, you have it. What's your <laughs> expectation around that? Thank you, audience. Um, I, th I think that's fair. Um, I think uh, um, if you could buy, um, I would say it's possibly a buy. Uh, I think um, there may be some additional nuances. Um, yeah when it comes to determining whether this is a competitive advantage for you. Right. right? And for most e-commerce sites, I think everybody's right. Uh, this is definitely a buy. Yeah. Right? Uh, because uh, you're thinking of only using this as for search. Mm. But if you take, um, if you take this uh, a step further, what other mechanisms or systems can you use a search engine uh, uh, to to serve uh, your purposes right. uh, and what it can be combined with. Uh, are you going to be using it for personalization uh, or are you going to be buying a personalization system? Right. Are you going to be uh, extending some of those other areas? And so I think um, I think that's, you know, that's also an important factor to consider. Brilliant. Yeah. Excellent. So comments, questions? Yes, we have a few kind of questions here. I'll just bring them, bring the panel back up. Um, so I guess the kind of question around AI, we've already kind of touched on. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, Have you ever thought of using machine learning to help in your searches, which you've... Yes, yeah. I have. Uh, and and uh, some of these uh, build and buy offerings do provide that. It's just, I would say that that's the next level or next phase, uh, and that comes into your competitive advantage, I would say. Uh, yeah. If you can take advantage of AI, um, you're more likely to have users find what they're looking for. Yeah. Um, and uh, what we found is that users that use a search 
they're more likely to purchase than users who just land on a product. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I like that. And uh, so thank you for that. And in terms of, um, so one of the things I'm quite interested in is obviously US auto parts are doing very well at the moment. And uh, in fact, before the session, I was kind of looking at the, at the kind of stock prices of, of your organization. Um, I, I know you might not be able to kind of answer any kind of questions around this, but I find it quite interesting. And what the curiosity that came up for me, having a curious mind, is, is that how much has the technology played an integral part in terms of the success of the organization you work for? Yeah, um, so for me, technology uh, is there to serve the business, right? Yeah. And so, um, you know, I, I can't say that technology is the only uh, the only thing that makes a business successful. Yeah. Right. Uh, it could be how you're managing the business from an operations point of view. It yeah. could also be uh, some of the major decisions you make in terms of, um, let's say, your product offering or how you deliver the product and so on. Yeah. So uh, those also play a big role, but. Uh, I would say in our case, uh, definitely technology has played a big part. Um, mm. If you look at uh, just you know a year, year and a half back, uh, we were um, dealing with um, some of the sites being, uh, you know, them looking more like they're still stuck in the 90s. <laughs> uh, right, okay. And at least how I feel, uh, maybe some of the other people who have worked on them don't feel that way, but uh, that's how I felt. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, we've, you know, rebranded car parts, uh, for sure, uh, and, uh, spent considerable amount, uh, on making sure that the user gets, uh, the customer gets an amazing experience. Yes. Um, I would say from a, uh, landing on the site to the checkout, we've enhanced that significantly and have made strides in that area. Yeah. We definitely have lots of room to improve. Definitely, let's say on the return space or uh, customer interaction space, those are still areas uh, as well as uh, maybe some search enhancements and personalization. Those yeah. are still areas that we're looking to improve on. Uh, but uh, we're a very different company than two years ago. I would mm -hmm. say, you know, we've made a huge pivot towards being, uh, you know, a true uh, leader in technology mm. and uh, uh, especially if you compare us to let's say 10 years ago we were at that space yeah. uh, where we were a leader in technology and in the last 10 years before uh, or the last 12 years uh, before this last two years yeah um, the the company really um, kind of was focused more on operations and not on technology and right. it it has to be a balance. Uh, technology has to be uh, a big part of an e-commerce company for sure. Yes, absolutely. I mean, it's, it is, the technology is kind of driving it. Uh, um, I mean, it's an interesting point uh, around kind of tech leaders and, and the decisions you make, how much have, you know, impact they have on an organization, you know. Um, I, I have a lot more to say on that, but just in the spirit of time. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, the technology that you're using and the solutions you create, uh, again, it's that curiosity around how much does your choices and solutions you create around the search technology have an impact on uh, your competitive advantage, you know? Um, I mean, I, I imagine it's kind of huge. It, it's, it's huge, yes. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. Um, and and um, what, what measures do you use around that? Sorry, um, Eugene. What, what, do you have measures around kind of tracking the the success of your search technology? So we do already have a custom built search technology uh, now. Yep. So um, uh, the way that we measure, um, uh, you know, success is uh, whether or not whatever we choose or we build again <laughs> yeah. is uh, it has to perform better and be easier to manage than the current solution. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. 
Um, so we'll kind of come to the top of the hour. I'm kind of mindful of people's, um, you know, uh, time and obviously yours as well. You're a very busy man. I know that. Uh, <laughs> we really appreciate you uh, offering your time here. So what, what would be the kind of key takeaway that you kind of like to leave the audience? What would, what would be your kind of gem of advice, your wisdom? Gem of advice. Brand. And I think uh, the whole uh, slide deck is a gem of advice. Uh, I'm sure there's plenty of golden nuggets and gems that you could find in there. Um, but uh, um, let me see. Um, I would say that uh, don't be afraid to make mistakes and choosing uh, the, the wrong path or not the wrong path, but the, the right path for the right time, right? Um, you may decide that you want to build something because you think that uh, it's the right approach. Yeah. And then as the industry or your market matures, you may decide that you want to swap it out for something that's a byproduct mm. um, because it's more robust. Uh, you may do the reverse. You may buy something and then find that it, uh, it, it doesn't solve your purpose or you cannot, uh, or that, team or company is not uh, uh, um, giving you the performance level that you're looking for yeah. uh, or feature set that you're looking for or bug fix uh, speed that you're looking for. Yes. And you may start and redo uh, the search again and redetermine what is kind of important to you. Yeah. And I think that is part of uh, being uh, in a you know, changing landscape. Uh, I'm sure none of us have thought about like, for example, COVID and uh, the situation we're in now, yeah. and yet we're all adapting to it and making changes. And so um, it, it applies to business as well. Yeah. You know, you have new competitors, you have uh, new websites coming up, you have new websites that are maybe not in your vertical, but uh, they've built something that customers are happy with and uh, expect uh, from uh, an e-commerce site. And now you have to uh, also add that type of uh, yeah. system to, to your uh, offering. Excellent. Yes, great. Um, so thank you again. Um, I mean, my, my kind of takeaway from this is that I didn't realize how complicated and sophisticated and intricate it is, you know, so there's a huge appreciation. And um, um, yeah, so thank you. Thank you for your time. And I also want to say, as we kind of say goodbye to people, is obviously subscribe to uh, CTO Confessions, uh, the kind of webinar series and podcast. Uh, we have a few more uh, really interesting topics coming up, and hopefully we'll have you on again, um, Eugene, to talk more about this and dig maybe deeper into it. Uh, appreciation to uh, US Auto Parts as well for you know providing you, you know you, yourself to come and come and speak. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, thank you, TC Hill. I really appreciate uh, you, you spending the time with me and uh, being patient with me with my busy uh, <laughs> work right. and life uh, environment. And uh, I also want to thank all of the live attendees. I think, um, you know, that's what makes this experience different. And thank you for all your questions, uh, as it helps me make sure that uh, I'm not only answering you, but also are um, thinking about those same issues as well. Brilliant. Yeah. And uh, just before we go, what I want to say is the tech leaders out there and you, you techies, uh, I used to be a techie myself, um, is, is that, you know, we live in a world where all organizations are interwoven into kind of digital world in some way, in some form. So tech leaders are a lot more important in organizations than a lot of us like to admit, you know, um, don't just deliver what you, the technology, sorry, the business asks of you, you know, deliver what the business needs, step up there and lead. I think this is really important for us tech leaders uh, to actually look to see what's going to serve the business, the people and our end customers at the end of the day. So, you know, champion Abs ahead. Yeah, absolutely. And remember the customer is always first. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Eugene. Thank Much you. Appreciate it. Take care, everybody. Keep safe.